Welcome. Welcome to Film Study Podcast with Lexi. I'm Lexi. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, rate the podcast five stars, all that good, wonderful stuff. Um, Today, I have Jaretta on the pod, and we're going to be talking about All American 604 Blackout, aka Spencer's 21st birthday. (laughs) I don't know why that reminded me of Princess Diaries 2, but I just said it in the realm of julie andrews for his 21st birthday um where he got got a little twisted got a little twisted we finna talk about it on this podcast as we do with all of the other episodes so anyway welcome to the show here it is this episode man this episode (laughs) give me a rating give me a rating a letter grading i should say a b c or d if you go to f i don't think it'll be f or f or whatever but A, B, C, D, F, what would you grade this episode and why overall? I think I would grade it a C because it was it was good and it was it was funny, but I felt like there were certain aspects that we could have saw play out differently and there was certain more things that we could have saw in general and some stuff that got skipped over that made me feel like, okay, so like it was good, but I wouldn't like give Ooh. it an eight. Now, well, because you said that, if you give you know, like a just general sense of like, what do you mean with Spencer's story or with like, is there a specific storyline or specific scenes you're talking about? So like, I feel like definitely when it comes to the party, we should have been able to like, I, I went in thinking that the whole episode was going to be about the party for one. And then Same. when when it came to like, um, the thing about the SWAT and I felt like it was kind of like like it was something serious that happened and then it was kind of like oh well he's a he's a changed person now so I'm like okay well there's still, <laughs> no, there's I still know. something very yeah, serious so yeah. like yeah it's just certain stuff that it, it was like okay you're a C but I still I still like it I still like it that's fair that's fair I do agree about the swatting but then as I was agreeing about the swatting I also thought hey you know they in a weird kind of way they um it is probably like uh almost i want to say like almost three years since the swatting has it really so it's been it's been a while it's been almost three because we're we're almost two years ahead at this point is we're like 15 months ahead a little over 15 months ahead uh from the end of season five and that was the end of season four so yeah it's been it's been a minute it's been a minute okay that makes it yeah yeah that makes it a little bit better so it's like, when you see it yeah. does but it also like i understand your point around it's a swatting yeah. but then i get why we'll talk about how olivia reacts and all of that and stuff like that um but yeah that's that's fair i what do i give this episode i i also think it was very funny i also agree i was there were just some things that i was hoping to see that i thought would be funny and different and I didn't get that necessarily. Well, I, it was funny, but it was like funny in a different way. So there's yeah. things like the bar fight that I thought would actually be funny and it was giving more action and yes, not necessarily yes, like exactly. comedy bar fight. So except for the end, the second bar fight. So those those things like that where I, I feel like I've just been on this straight line of like B in the B range and I feel like I'm going to keep with that line. I thought- okay. Is it gonna be bad for me to say like I thought this was gonna be A for me, but it's not quite an A. Yeah, it's probably like a B plus. <laughs> it's probably like a B plus. Um, so that's my that's my grade. Um, yeah, and it's just because uh, again we can have these conversations because we are script writers and it's yeah you know, it just didn't it didn't and it's some of the things that we talked about in that we expected it to be more of a true flashback than the flashback jumping back and forth between presents. Yeah, exactly. Muddied up the story a little bit, I think. And I get the, it was fun for him to sort of try to recollect, but it, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we like, we'll talk about it later, but like the payoff for once you finally figure out why they exactly. jump him at the point. Well, like, yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, yes. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's start off with, um, I'm going to start with Coop and Patience, your okay. couple. 
<laughs> just because you tried okay. to come for my couple before we even started this thing. <laughs> Actually, in one of my couples, because I have multiple couples, and you were like, oh, you're a couple. Well, we share Bolivia, so you know I'm talking That's about Jordania. So. <laughs> I know you are a Jordana hater, so this is going to be a fun episode for you. Uh, but and an even funner one for me because I love eggs. <laughs> I give me some eggs over here. Um, but yeah, let's start with Coop and Patience. We really don't get much about them this episode, but we get them in these small little moments. Uh, and we see, I don't remember which flashback, and this is kind of what I relate back to and why it wasn't, it didn't get reached that A for me is because the jumping back and forth muddied up my timeline a little bit and having just watched it the one time we just finished watching the episode. So I don't remember if this was in the first uh, flashback or the second flashback or what flashback it was in. Obviously it was after they got to Layla's lounge, but Coop and Patience Mm -hmm. had this like interaction where they were talking and Coop was like, oh, you look so happy and da 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 and you know she was like well I am happy because I'm here for my friend's birthday party and it's for my other friend's lounge and I don't know it was just really awkward to me (laughs) and this was before even any of the weirdness happened where it could be awkward so I don't know if I felt that in this scene but I wanted to know your thoughts on like did what this is awkward for you as well See, for that particular scene, it wasn't awkward for me because, like, okay, it was a tiny bit awkward because right before I was that, like, when Coop was, when Patience was talking about, yeah, why wouldn't I? Be? Because, <laughs> because, like, Spencer had said something like, y'all are my favorite couple or something, and they're not together. Oh, so I know, right, right. I know right, that right, made right, it, right. like, kind of embarrassing for them a little bit. So, like, then you can kind of see that Coop was trying to, like, save face a little bit. So, that, I could see how that would make it But then awkward. she was also, like, she was saving face, but then she was also kind of, oh, yes, I you're happy because I'm here, too. So, I just thought that was kind of <laughs> random. I know yeah, that okay. Coop has been sort of wanting to tell patients that she still has feelings for her. But, but it yeah. also felt very strange for them because it's they've known each other so long, and this felt very much. It's I like that, you. yeah, like that shy as if they, him. like exactly yeah. as if they didn't date for X many <laughs> X many years, and also <laughs> that because it was a di- it was a change in their dynamic. I felt like a flip in their dynamic. We are very used to seeing patients be that sort of a person that Coop was in this than mm-hmm. could be that sort of a person so it was just it threw me for a little bit of a loop it threw me for a little bit of a loop <laughs> i agree with it i can agree with that yeah um but then but then but then but then um you know they take that seek uh awkward moment and that's one of the reasons this did happen okay this happened before because that's how we got to the flashback is that mm-hmm. coop sort of speeds out of layla's when she drops off Spencer to reminisce about or recollect uh, what happened at Layla's lounge uh, when they get there. So Coop leaves when she was supposed to be with Spencer. Yeah, and at first I thought, like, I was like, no, did she drunkenly tell her that she was in love with her or something? Is that why right. she's fleeing the scene? But no, it didn't end up being it. So. Exactly. And, and what it ended up being is that, which Coop later tells Spencer, as she recollects, is that uh, Coop essentially talks about her night with patience after they get back to the baker house and patience goes to kiss her and coop is saying oh you're drunk and we've had a long night and xyz and it doesn't feel right uh and i thought that we were gonna jump back to this patience you know really being a little thirsty with coop and trying to get back together with her uh and coop saying oh no let's pump the brakes but they flipped it on its head and patience was like oh i was just trying to <laughs> i was just trying to hit it and quit it i was just trying to hit it and quit it. right like so what did we think about that like okay i respect coop for like they're drunk she doesn't want to like take advantage so i definitely respected that part but i definitely think she also blew her chance at patience because like patience says she just wanted to have a fun time coop trying to make it all serious so like yeah, it's gonna take her a while to get out of that one, and it's gonna lead so to were, more awkward with, moments. You were with patience on the hit it and quit it. <laughs> I think so because, like, I always feel like it's not gonna just be that for them. Like, they could act like this, that, mm-hmm. but then the next morning they would have woke up sober, looking at each other crazy in the bed. 
So I feel like if it had happened, it would have been more than that, but mm. she didn't want it and Coop didn't. I don't know. Want it. Patience was giving. <laughs> like, I feel patience like drunk was patience was very much hit it and quit it. <laughs> was patience compared to everybody else because like I don't know. that's stuff. a good question we don't we don't really know how drunk everybody obviously Liv was not drunk because she's so yeah but we don't know how drunk everybody else would be also well we'll get to it when we get to spencer's part but i was like is Liv about to kiss spencer and is that does that technically you know the tasting the alcohol because he's uh, drinking a lot so anyway we'll get back to that when we yeah. get there but yeah that is a great question on this Coop and patience thing is how drunk were they? How sur- sober were they? Were is this really what patience wanted? Just a fun time. But I do think from sober her and from drunk her, it was giving. Mm, you're cute. And all. So, you, so you think if like Coop ever reveals her feelings, she's gonna be like, no, but thank you. Like I think if it's any time in the present. Or okay, where we okay. are right now, that she would maybe further on the line that might change, but right now where we are in these couple episodes, I I do not think that she would take her up on that offer. Okay, okay. <laughs> but let's <laughs> switch to Asher. You know someone okay. who took Asher up on an offer? Wait, <laughs> I was Wade. too excited. <laughs> Wade took Asher up on his offer to join Coastal Carolina. Um, is it no, Coastal Carolina? Coastal California. Coastal Carolina is a real school. <laughs> That's where I graduated from. <laughs> no, I, that. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. So join uh, Way, uh, join Asher at Coastal California, becoming their new quarterback because their quarterback got injured. And it's just, you know, like Asher is icing him out um, and really just like, I don't want to go run plays with you. I just want to make sure that you know our playbook. Uh, I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to be your coach. Uh, and he sort of goes to the episode sort of teaching Wade, in present day, teaching Wade the plays. Uh, Wade apologizes for the, for the, uh, for the swatting. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the group later on, as we get to the recollection of events, figures out that Asher is the one, because he confesses that he's the one that, um, invited essentially Wade and it was his idea to have Wade come be their QB. Uh, the whole group is not feeling it, but then Olivia sort of says, hey, you know, let's hear Asher out, like, you know, basically defends Asher, defends the whole situation and says, hey, I should be the one that's the most upset about this, but maybe Wade has changed. Uh, So that was a moment um, from her of just, you know, maturity and growth. And um, she's asked everybody to let Asher explain his reasoning. Um, Mm -hmm. I did think this is interesting. Coop called the cops pigs. And this is another way that I say all American pushes the general boundaries of television in small little ways like this. Because I said, ooh, the people watching this that are gonna hear their language. And I'm 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 proud. I think it's like I think it's great that they continue to push the boundaries of you know what they can say on television and and really stand up for what's right because Coop did call the call the police pigs. And I was like, mm, speak. It's the truth. Yeah. yeah I can't exactly. believe y'all. I, I can't believe they let y'all say that on network television. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and then, but yeah, Liv stops the gang from, from getting upset uh, or getting too upset over this whole issue. Uh, but then obviously it starts a, it starts a little fight because Spencer pushes him. But at the end of that, uh, Asher starts to warm up to Wade, uh, especially after hearing that he took Spencer home. Uh, later on that evening um, and that he did seem genuinely apologetic. So what did you think about that? Um, I thought that, like, I believe, I like to believe in the good in people. So I was trying to believe in the good in Wade, but at the same time, like, I just could not forget, like, swatting is scary. Like, that's one of the scariest things that could happen to somebody. People can die from yeah. that. So, but, but, but like Especially you said, majority black group. Yeah. Exactly. But like you said, it was, some time ago so I guess if they willing to give him a chance I can too but it was just like it was irking my nerves a little bit but also Asher was irking my nerves a little bit because like he was being a good coach but also he was letting his his person his personal stuff into the um the coaching room because it's like yeah I it was I understand what you're saying because I thought the same way and it I thought I think this was probably the third or so scene that they had had together. 
And I, I just sat there and thought, why are you being so antagonistic towards a player that you brought in? He was sitting exactly. wherever he was sitting, kind of minding his own business, and you brought him in. And so you have to deal with that. And I know Asher later said that he was frustrated with himself speaking to Spencer about the whole situation and he's mad at itself. But in terms of this team, um, and everybody's human, everybody's human, so it's a human yeah. reaction. But in terms of this team, you brought him in knowing who he is. So it's not like this was a shock to you. You knew what you were doing. Exactly. And I feel like, I feel like, if like wait, I feel like he he's a good quarterback, so he obviously mm-hmm. they should listen yeah. to some of his plays. He was a Heisman contender, yeah, exactly. So like, if he says that some of this stuff isn't right, maybe you should take your head out of your behind and listen just a little bit because y'all keep losing. <laughs> so listen to him. Maybe yep. y'all can beat Spencer. There you go. So yeah, I love how you said Spencer, not GAU. <laughs> oh well, GAU is a whole, but like <laughs> <laughs> speaking up. Speaking of, <laughs> we're not getting to Spencer quite yet in the GAU. Uh, the issues surrounding Jordan on the rise and, and Spencer needing the ball quite yet. But uh, okay. we will talk about Jordan talking about some of this with his sister, his twin sister. And also, simultaneously, Jordan fighting with his fiance. <laughs> so... Um, Essentially, 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 um, Liv invites Jordan to help her write uh, the bio on the dad. And I, you know what? I have to give myself, uh, (laughs) is laughing at myself a little bit because I said, what prompts them to go and reminisce? Because the synopsis has said, oh, they just reminisce about him. And I I don't know why it just went over my head that, oh, she's writing this book and she's finally getting her, she's getting from Jordan's perspective on on Billy. Uh, But so the book is why, what prompted them to sort of reminisce on, on Billy. And simultaneously, right, there's this tension because, oh, Layla walks down the stairs. <laughs> Layla walks down the stairs on 10. And you know what? I would be too. I was like, I would be too. I don't know if I'd be quite that mad, but uh, Layla walks down the, on the, the down the stairs on, on 10. No hello no good morning no you didn't answer my text and jordan's like oh i didn't want to answer your text because you were too busy having all of this in front of live by you <laughs> Whoa, be tripping. they said we don't care if you're here or not we still go argue <laughs> we still go argue oh, but i do have to say i do have to say the fight eight especially the last part where it was just like uh, I I'm so busy. I can't even finish this sin. Tense. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, so they were fighting. They were fighting, and then uh, Liv, <laughs> which go you, Liv, sticking up for her best friend. I said what I said. Sticking up for Layla, say, telling Jordan that that was rude. Uh, how he was talking to Layla and how he was treating Layla. Um, and Jordan was like, "Well, how about you shut up." <laughs> <laughs> Typical brother and sister moment. I know, exactly, exactly. Typical moment for them. But uh, they do end up, you know, just talking about uh, Billy. And Jordan tells this story about how Billy helped um, Jordan stand up to a bully at this park that had this really, really long and big and tall uh, slide. Um, And before we get to more on the slide story, I wanted to pause here because... (sighs) Audience, you might be sick of hearing me talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it as long as they're giving us these new versions of Billy that we have never seen or heard about before. Where is this coming from? And can we talk about how Grace last week, because I didn't talk, I didn't go in on this last week, but I'm going to go in because it came back up again. And suddenly Billy's helping Jordan stand up to a bully. And Billy stood up to a bully last week when they talked to Grace. And I said, oh, so are you going to interview Carter, who he actually bullied to the point of needing to get like, kicked out of school? It was a mess. And then, who bullied who back when it was, like, Spencer's dad and Billy? Because they were, like, button heads, too. I can't remember which one was being mean right. to which one. Right. So it's, like, revisionist history. It oh. is revisionist history. <laughs> Here's the 
thing is that they kind of admit it to it, but I just want them to come out and say, you know, this is, I just want them to come out and say on this show, essentially have Liv say, I'm going to write a fluff piece about my dad. And she sort of kind of said it this episode when Jordan was talking, they started by talking about the, the urine, switching the urine out and Liv said, oh, I'm not going to include that um, mm-hmm. in season one when Billy took the test for Jordan because he had smoked weed. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> this revisionist history just bothers me so much. And I know that it's his family and I know that they love him. And I do, I'm not expecting the characters to trash him, but I'm also just, can we tell the truth about Billy? Like what? Now all of a sudden he was the hero. <laughs> he was it's the like, hero that stood up to Billy the bullies. <laughs> It's like paint him as a real person, but I exactly. noticed that as much as they paint him as like this saint of a person, they're making it seem like he was creature. this sorry football player. This mythical creature. Like, it was ridiculous. I know, and then it was just like, has dad was dad ever in contention for the Heisman? Okay. Okay. <laughs> like but also, said- Billy was never like. Billy was an NFL player, so obviously he was good. But yeah, and, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but Billy was never shown to be this amazing, like the star running back. <laughs> that True. was ama- like I think that he had he had a ring, but he was just a very good running back, and that's okay. We just don't have to lie. <laughs> that's my thing. Right. Like, why are we lying? <laughs> why are we doing revisionist history? <laughs> I don't know, but they need to cut it out. Really was- uh, they need to. They need to. Just because I'm, I get, every single time this happens, I get so frustrated. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's a, that's my end of the rant on Billy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Liv, Liv and Jordan go to this park, and obviously the slides end, end, ends up being this really small, tiny looking slide <laughs> that looks ridiculous and is not Mount Everest, as Liv says. Uh, but Liv and Jordan continue to reminisce on how um, Jordan eventually, like, I think slid on the bully's head or something like that. And Billy yelled at him for doing that because the parent, the uh, the parent, the other kid's parents got upset. Uh, but Jordan says, even though I hurt this kid, I think that dad was proud of me for standing up for myself. And that I guess the whole point of going to this park was that Billy got peace from going to this park. But also, I feel like this storyline was a little unclear. And maybe that's because of part of me is thinking about the revisionist history. But yeah. I didn't ultimately get the connection between the bully story of Jordan standing up to it and then sort of Billy apparently being proud of Jordan for standing you know what I think up it and was, having the peace. I what? think it was like one of the writers personal story and then they kind of embedded mm. the billy story at the end then it didn't probably really yeah or like somebody that they knew that they yeah. sort of yeah 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 the yeah. thing but i just wish that there were to your point about payoffs i wish that us going to this park ultimately had a better payoff in terms of the end part of what they got and when mm-hmm. Liv was saying oh so this is really just a place for dad to reflect uh, because it didn't, I feel like it didn't start that way, but then somehow we ended on, this is where Billy reflected and was proud of Jordan and all of those things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Though I will say I really like having a siblings in a scene just to two of them. I really yes, like that. Yes, yes. Me too. Me too. But I definitely get what you're saying about the lack of the big payoff. Yeah, yeah. And I also just don't think that we needed, I don't think that we needed that big payoff for Billy talking about being proud of Jordan I think that they could have kept it at Liv admitting for right Jordan was so shocked to hear this and you know I know that Liv loves her twin brother for sure she has so much love for her twin brother but I do think that Liv we just haven't seen these moments where Liv really pauses to say that she's proud of Jordan it happens every once in a while don't get me wrong like it's happened in a couple scenes here and there but it's not this continuous thing where she's she you know, heaps praise upon Jordan and their siblings, so it makes sense. But for her to sort of pause and say, like, I'm proud of you, 
and encouraging him to take stock of his accomplishments because he was feeling bad about being in the Heisman conversation. And then he said, it's just a conversation. I'm not necessarily really a contender. And she really made him, you know, sit and think and be in the moment and say, hey, this is a great thing. And I think that could it like that was the payoff on its own with this yeah. going to the park story. And I don't think that they needed necessarily to circle it back to Billy. Yeah, because when she told him to enjoy his wins as they're happening, I thought it was so important. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of got the feeling, like, when she was telling him she was proud of him and stuff, that, like, this is the turning point where, you know, like, for the rest of their lives, they're going to be there for each other in a way that their dad can't now. So I thought that was Exactly, really nice. exactly. And that he wasn't always, right? So he yeah. said that. He said that, I guess, when the, the, this was one of his sayings, was right, like, be where your feet are planted, I think, was mm -hmm. a saying. Um, and I think that that's totally okay, is that, you know, he didn't always say it. He didn't always, like, say it outright and say it to us. But there's, like, sayings and advice and things that he gave us to stop and pause and think. And now we're continuing on that legacy. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm going to say it one more time before we get off of this, is that we don't need to sort of come back around and be like, this is where he had his peace. This is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a hero then he took the mom and the kid out for ice cream <laughs> right after he went to go sleep with grace <laughs> Second night. that was uncalled for by me that was uncalled for by me but deserved <laughs> um <laughs> anyway uh then later on um right after that Liv is saying there's one thing left for you to do and that's apologize to your fiance. <laughs> that's apologize to your fiance. It really caused Jordan to think, like, hey, is this argument that you're having worth it? She calls him, she calls him a name, called him out of his name. <laughs> I mm. loved it. It was just like, get real, get real, Jordan, is basically what she was saying. Um, and called him whiny. A whiny little bee. A whiny <laughs> little bee. Love that, love that line. Um, <laughs> but I also love that this scene paralleled to, uh, 308, and I actually randomly just watched that episode yesterday, uh, where, uh, it was after the Vegas fallout and, um, Jordan talks to Liv and he brings up, he was talking about Spencer at the time. And then mm -hmm. he says to live, right? There's only one thing left for you to do, like clear the air. And he was like, or she was like, Yeah, I'm gonna I have a plan to talk to Spencer. And he says, I met Layla. And then they have this parallel now, a couple of seasons later, where <laughs> Liv tells Liv tells Jordan, there's only one thing left to do. And he says, Oh, yeah, da, da, da. And she's like, No, I met Layla. So that was really cool, I think. I like that. Back. Yeah, because it also speaks to as much as we were laughing at the first scene with the argument. I think it speaks to um, just the fact that they've all known each other a very long time and Layla has been a part of their life for a very long right. time. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so that was that was it. But shifting over to Layla and Layla's version of events, when we get to the flashbacks, um, we know that she and Jordan had another sort of disagreement at her lounge uh, mm -hmm. because he's just like, oh, I'm surprised you're even standing here. You're so busy. <laughs> <laughs> and she said well i was busy planning my friend's birthday party uh and i know you have a lot of opinions on that and she was talking about this with patience because patience came to apologize for the fight uh but <laughs> basically she's just like explains that she has been reducing <sighs> weaning off of her medication even though i think it's stupid uh she has been weaning off of her medication um and she is starting to feel things more and that's leading to more mood swings, but she's also being able to do things like cry over a puppy, which her medication won't allow her to do because it mm -hmm. keeps her in a numb state. Uh, and it was also interesting that patients said like, oh, why are you weaning off of your medication? But then did it find a problem with it? But also I said, the writers had, patients can be a little bit of a ditz sometimes let's be real and so yeah. the writers specifically had Layla tell this to patients because if she told it to Jordan or Liv they would have been like you're crazy but patients was just like oh yeah that's such a great idea 
especially so nice. <laughs> especially if she would have been like, it was Ryan's idea. Like they would have been right. like, girl, why are you listening to him? Like I was exactly. like, why exactly, exactly. So and meanwhile, Patience is like, Ryan's caring for all of us. He's gives such great advice. He's helped me figure out how to fight club this man. Like, <laughs> like who even is what this is- guy? Why are they listening to him so much? What is happening? What is happening? But I know, uh, but then, you know, so they do that. Obviously, I mentioned that Liv encourages Jordan to go back to see Layla to apologize. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, then Jordan eventually does apologize. And so so does she. They apologize for being whiny and then they have makeup sex. The best kind, you know. But I do know that you had opinions, opinions on Jordan and Layla. So I want you to express those opinions. (laughs) Okay, so these are my opinions on your couple. And don't be trying to attack me, okay? I feel like they are childish, okay? And, like, yeah, they made up at the end, but it's something about your couple that feels so incredibly forced, and I feel like they might actually be doomed because every time they get back together, here they are fighting again, and I'm like, you know what? Y'all are too young for this. Just break up and but then what try they, to come back together. What if the, Ten I'm going to ask later. you, that, like can come back together what do you mean come back together this is actually they haven't fought a lot like i feel like it's always the little petty stuff like that's the kind of stuff that festers and builds over over time like you could have a big blowout and then like make up but with the little small stuff like they do it just but do you think it's small because it's about the wedding i mean I guess, like the stuff for this episode. <laughs> I I'm going, like, you know, I'm going to have a comeback for you. <laughs> like, I felt like with the with the text thing, that was small to me. Like he liked. Oh the yeah, text. but that was that's true. Me, but, but I will pause. But I will pause and say, I think that's a very normal thing in relationships to say for, and I only because I just saw this go viral. But to have someone, especially like a woman in a normal, like heteronormative relationship, be mm-hmm. like, oh, you didn't send me, you're, you're used to this man blowing up your phone every single morning. And if you don't get a good morning text or a good morning or, or a hello or whatever, the top of the morning when this has been happening for months straight, you're going to, and for them, for two years straight, right? And so for, for her, this is like, okay, well, screw you then. <laughs> I feel like that's very normal. But it's also normal for those texts to like wean off after a while. She's lucky she got them for two years. This so is maybe- Jordan. We're talking about this is no, no. Right. This is the first morning that he has not sent a good morning text. Let's be for real. Let's right. be she for can't, real. She's gonna count herself lucky this for is that the first, first of But all. that's what I'm saying. So it what? But it was. That's what I'm saying. It was a big deal to them because this is so out of the ordinary for him to just not text her. And then when you're talking about, like, the wedding, I feel like he's doing so hard to plan it because he's literally terrified if he doesn't plan it, she won't care because she he literally has to keep making her care about this wedding. And, like, what kind of marriage is that going to be if she won't even care about the wedding part? Like, but I think that we, we're we seeing why, because she's not caring about the wedding and, and, why, and honestly why they seem so whiny today, usually, right? It's Jordan. But why Layla seems more whiny today is because she's weaning herself off of medication. She struggles with major depression. And so I think it's, I, I hear what you're saying, but I think that all of these things that you're talking about in terms of them being childish, I think that they have a reasoning behind them. And I think that these reasonings are like, I think that the reasoning behind them are valid and that we're seeing them sort of be more out of character now, uh, especially Layla, uh, because she was and even the fact that she wasn't excited for the wedding plan we've had her say two times in a row now two weeks in a row i should say that her medication is keeping her in this middle state and so it's not that she doesn't want to be excited but for the wedding planning she says that but if you're truly in a mental state how do you have the myth the emotional capacity to get angry but you can't get like excited or happy that don't make sense to me because she's always going off on somebody. So it's like, if you were truly in a middle state, you wouldn't be able to get angry either. That's the part that's be- behooving me. That's not what I've heard from people that experience the, um, like, similar things. Only because I literally just talked to a, my friend who's a nurse. I, I wish, thank you for saying that, because I wanted to bring this up. My friend who's a nurse uh, and, you know, st- studying to be, like, in the medical field, uh, mm-hmm. said that what Layla is going through and describing is so normal. And so it's that she doesn't, like, I, 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 
correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I feel like anger is really, I think, still easier to get to than it like extreme joy or extreme happiness or really, really not anger, but like sadness is the low point that she can't get to because that's where it's like the pr- depressiveness just creates this mood of like recurring negative sadness. Um, and actually anger and irritability are um, like, effects and behaviors of people who struggle with uh with major depression disorder and so it's not that she like it'll stop her from getting angry i don't think that's it i think it's it stops her from feeling extreme joy and really really low sadness i mean i guess that just don't make sense (laughs) to me but i'm not in the medical field either so yeah 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 so i think and i think this storyline is a really great way for them to continue to explore what that looks like because we don't see it that often on tv i think layla is a really great representation of that because <clears throat> even um adrian adrian who uh adrian dukes who's a writer on the show who wrote the last episode that mentioned it said that they really talked about really wanting to explore this they always knew that they were going to loop back to layla's uh to layla's mental health but they talked about specifically wanting to explore what it's like to live in this middle um to live in this middle you can't get to joy where you can't get the sadness i think that you can get to anger but you can't get to those other emotions because they want to keep you in that middle state so you don't go too low Mm -hmm. and so i think again it's not layla it's not that she does it she's not excited to wedding plan or doesn't want to wedding plan it's that sometimes her medication has her feeling absent mind a lot of the times her medication has her feeling absent minded and a lot of the times it doesn't allow her to get excited like how she wants to be that's like where na- she naturally wants to be and she even said that she was just like my poor fiance last week right if i want to do, be able to do these things and be excited for them and be excited not even just about the wedding be excited about my lounge opening and be excited about everything that, that's going on in my life but I, because of my medication i just can't and now she's essentially weaning off of her medication without any doctor's advice and now her mood swings are like all over the place on top of the fact that this is the first time that her very very much in love fiance is not giving her a good morning text i feel like this is justified but i also feel like he doesn't know that she's not on it so she should yeah she does tell him i agree I agree. So that he I won't think, think like she doesn't week. care. He'll know why she why why she's I agree. Like that. I agree, but I think the writers are trying their hardest to keep them from sharing that information with each other. Because again, that's why why they had her tell patients when I say she's ditzy. So she's not going to dig deeper into these things. She's there. They're like, we can't have her tell the people that are going to make her say, why are you doing this? We got to, we got three more episodes to drag this story. (laughs) We got three more episodes to resolve this. But I, so I think that this is coming for her to talk to Jordan and maybe live about this, but uh, yeah, there we're 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 still in the middle of this rising to its to to its sort of climax with her. Well, anyway, I that's like them, but yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You have to like them. I was just explaining to your point. I don't think I don't think it was childish for childish sake. Uh, I think Jordan is naturally sort of he lives in that space where he gets whiny. He's just an emotional guy. I think, um, and he always has been, and I think he's matured a lot, but he still is very mo- emotional guy. Uh, but I think in Layla's case, it's more of really her depression and the effects of her depression. I think sometimes we forget that she had to take, this girl had to take daily medication, <laughs> daily medication for years that we just don't think about. I know, come outside of your bias. Come outside of your it. bias and understand and understand Layla as a character. Do it as a scriptwriter. <laughs> you have such a problem with her. She's the Peyton, and I didn't like Peyton, so it's not going to change. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, I did love Peyton, by the way. Oh. Peyton shooters. Be with me. <laughs> anyway uh but their end scene was very cute to me to me it was very cute and they had makeup sex but they better wipe down that they better cleanse all that out in the lounge y'all are ridiculous for doing that right <laughs> that's I like when people have sex in the airplane huh i, I know they 
definitely got like a bank office they could have done exactly it. right like people eat here <laughs> or i don't know if they eat there but whatever like this is nasty but also do you get for you whatever you want to do people do this all the time <laughs> We saw, I don't know why I just thought of like the Gossip Girl intro where, uh, where Serena and, and Nate. <laughs> That's a good example though. That's a good example. Exactly. exactly. Uh, so anyway, so that was that. And then we get into the last uh, storyline where Spencer, Spencer got drunk. I, I was like, should we be showing him drinking this much on television? Like, we shouldn't be I encouraging this thing, Like, alcohol poisoning. You cannot take 21 Literally. You, you will die. Let's Literally, watch. you can't. And I was just like, I was hoping that some, because, you know, all, all America be a PSA show. We gonna get back to that when we get, get, when we get to <laughs> predictions. But All American has always been a PSA show. But they not gonna PSA about alcohol poisoning? <laughs> not even nothing at the end, a disclaimer, no alcohol abuse hotline or nothing right they, they didn't all right yeah 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 nk i'm not with you on that one you should have put a you should put a disclaimer at the the top of the episode or or at the bottom of the episode uh but yeah i was just like 21 shots is insane 21 shots is insane especially the older you get i was just as you know i was just out of town i was like Whoa. <laughs> 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 so yes and I had way less than uh, 21 drinks. Way less than 21 shots, I should say. Um, I feel like two <laughs> shots would take me out. Much less really, two? No, I, yeah. I could do more than two. But it's like, when you get <laughs> when you get up there, you're like, oh, this is, let's not. <laughs> I will say, uh, they were trying to get, I was already a couple of drinks in uh, a couple mm-hmm. of days ago with some, with, some, um, with some friends and work colleagues. And they were trying to get me to take a to take another shot, and I literally like, ooh, like pretended and then went and spit it out and put some water in. It. I'm like y'all not gonna have me slipping. You're right. not gonna have me slipping. <laughs> what you gotta do? Exactly. Take care of yourself. That's if there's nothing else you take away from this episode. Take care of yourself. Do not drink in excess. Mm-hmm. You know. Monitor it, monitor it, and don't don't binge drink. This is heavy binge drinking, is what we saw in this episode. Yes. So be safe, everyone. I'm glad that they at least had Jordan take an Uber. He's at the Uber, the driver. Yeah, side. yeah. I'm glad they mentioned that specifically. I know because I thought when he was like counting down the time, I'm like, is he trying to like count down the time till he's sober? But then I, <laughs> I was like, that's not good at all. <laughs> He was just like, ah, give, give me an hour, I'll sober. Like, no, no, so glad that he had a driver come. Um, but anyway, let's get into why all of this was happening. Liv wakes Spencer up on his birthday. Uh, when she brought those muffins, number one, I knew. <laughs> I knew that they were not going to taste like Grace's muffins. And then that was confirmed. And by the way, Spencer thought that he was going to get another muffin, a different kind of muffin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he did not he got his regular muffins and then he had to go to his mom's house to get the regular four bread muffins that she makes no um, but listen boys get on my nerves so bad it's like they mama food the best like okay what you can't cook no more you gonna starve or you gonna learn how to eat somebody else food? yeah and also am i the only one that thought his look was interesting because his look said that the muffins were disgusting but then he told his mom he told grace oh they weren't bad they just were different and i said that wasn't the look that you gave <laughs> right <laughs> so i said you could have you could have been like mm. like you, the first taste could have been like oh what is this and the next case could have been like okay but no it was like what is it <laughs> uh if you can't see this i made various faces uh but anyway <laughs> dylan dylan and his mom hype him up for his birthday his mom says oh it's your first drink i don't even know why they put that joke in because all the way back to season one, we know that Grace knows that Spencer drinks. <laughs> Let's be for real. Like, I don't, I didn't get it either. I didn't understand. I didn't understand. Like it wasn't even because it, it, and it would be different if we've seen Spencer drink without her. Or like it's been more of a secretive thing, but it's never been a secretive thing for him ever. I mean, he went to Vegas. <sighs> on his own 
she knows literally he would just in season one he would just leave out the house at 10 o'clock at night and be like i'm going to a party <laughs> what are we doing? them parties on the beach with the beer and exactly stuff. <laughs> the part when he first got to beverly oh i'm headed out to this party i'm going to ashes like what come on now come on now be for real <laughs> so anyway that was just that was just an interesting line that they put in there but dylan was hilarious number one for dylan what happened to his crush on Liv? Because now he done moved on to Layla and nobody knew about it. Listen, when did Dylan grow up? It's so weird. He been grown. He been a full grown man. Like, it's so weird. He still feels like a kid to me. And he, I was He's like, why you want your man. brother leftovers so bad? Like, not to call him leftovers, but like that's kind of what it would be to him. So like, mm. what, what do you want your brother? Why don't you call him the girls leftovers? <laughs> Sorry, feminism. But like, ex girlfriends. Why do you want your brother's ex girlfriends so bad? That's true. I mean, but it's been living Layla. It's been pretty consistent on that front. It's been it is weird. consistent on that front. Um, and he made her a picture, which was hilarious. Like, what? <laughs> he was in the good Aren't picture you though. In high school? It was a good picture. I mean, he's an artist, so they had to mm-hmm. they had to come correct. But yeah. I said, aren't you in high school? Um, it seems by now. I know he should be by now. Let's let's okay. not do this pretending where he's not in high school. <laughs> um, but which I think he probably is in high school because Layla said, let him come into the lounge. Okay. So I would they wouldn't be bringing a middle school around all that drinking. True. True. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, regardless, <laughs> the whole thing was, and Dylan was here to witness all of this, is that we got the spencer's first drink and then we got a montage with uh the bar hop and then basically we only got like quick snippets and then the whole rest of the episode as we said it was spencer trying to recollect what happened because uh Liv had said that she had a very important gift to give him and he sort of forgot what that what that gift was he after this bar hop montage he woke up <clears throat> montage he woke up a wades um he goes to goes to school goes to the gym to, for practice but he's late jordan says oh that's all you have to say uh to spencer and he doesn't realize what it's for kenny tells spencer to skip practice because he looks like he's gonna throw up uh <laughs> dylan tells spencer after he can't answer grace's question about who all was there he's just like oh we're walking across the bar with no shirt off like come on like what's going on sir you was, was having so a good funny, time <laughs> like he literally his mom, it was funny was you there you wasn't right. there, didn't you? Like, <laughs> you so wasn't there. <laughs> and also, it, I don't know, I don't know if that was just Karima, just like, this is how she chose to approach the scene, but Karima gave a very, to me at least, she gave a face that said, I, I do know what happened actually, but I'm just not going to tell you. Did you get that vibe? It was giving that she I knew said, a little bit about what happened. <laughs> I did too. That's why I think he was starting to wonder, like, was she there? And I don't remember. Right. Her, so like, <laughs> right and i don't know if she did that on purpose and she just as karima she was acting and saying yes grace does know what happened like actually his friends called and said what's wrong with your son but like, yeah <laughs> it was just was an she, interesting look yeah or was she doing like that mom thing where they'll look at you exactly you confess? Like, <laughs> right exactly so it was just it was a hats off to karima because it was a funny it was a funny look yeah um but again this spurs spencer then especially after talking to dylan, dylan to try and figure out what's going what's going on. So he goes to talk to Coop um, to find Liv's gift, and and he goes to the first bar or the last bar that he remembers, and it sparks something when he hears Spencer James. I love that guest actor so bad. Spencer James. <laughs> and that was just so random. Like that's what job exactly. Spencer, and it was just the Spencer J. And it was like, because after the news clip that comes up, he was like, Spencer James. <laughs> so, what? I need to know how he auditioned for that role. Like, did they just tell him to say it in different ways? <laughs> I can imagine that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, but we, we get the first memory because he hears the Spencer James. Uh, thank you, man, at the end of the bar. Uh, but we get that he's already drunk by the time he gets to this bar that he visits first. And Liv, like, is encouraging him to slow down. Because he's like, oh, I can see both of you. Both of you are fine, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was 
was so funny. This was also like a very comedic episode from Daniel. He killed it. It was really hilarious. Yes, Drunk Spencer um, is hilarious. Yes, Drunk Spencer is very hilarious. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, she's encouraging him to slow down, maybe take some water. Uh, and then we get the Wade news, uh, as in like the TV shows that Wade's going coastal. And then it talks about Jordan and Spencer's Heisman chances. Um, and then they shift to Layla's because they went to Layla's lounge after that bar and that's when he they start talking about uh talking about cake and he remembers that they got him a cake where him getting a heisman doesn't look quite right uh and he makes a wish and he gives jordan a dirty look <laughs> and little layla have this funny conversation about oh do we, do we want that wish to come true <laughs> It was just crazy. Because yeah. at this point, I feel like no one more actually than the two of them have witnessed these constant Spencer and Jordan butting heads, craziness. <laughs> it's true. So at this point, this is just a Tuesday for them. <laughs> like, oh, do we want this wish to come true? No, but they gonna figure it out eventually. <laughs> um, and you know, with that, then it's like Jordan really trying to talk to Spencer throughout the night and saying, "Hey, you know, why are you mad at me?" Right? Like, I get the smallest taste of your type of success, and you're mad at me. And then sort of Asher comes in and he admits that he was the one that did this whole Wade thing. And then Spencer pushes him and then it turns out to an all out brawl. <laughs> like what is happening? What is that? And also, like I said, this was like an action scene. I thought it was going to be a funny scene, but then we get patients doing karate out of nowhere. <laughs> like, what is going on? Yeah. Cause I thought they said that they didn't take the self-defense class. Exactly. So but, it? <laughs> because Ryan was like, Oh, I have to get her weight up or something like that. But we never saw him teaching her all of this. How is this happening in a week? Right. Exactly. So yeah. And also I thought Layla was going to be the one to throw hands and that didn't happen. So I was kind of disappointed about that. This well, is why you can like never truly really trust. You can never truly trust spoilers by the way, because Layla did not throw Ryan, hands. Right, though. <laughs> Like, she, she said, really don't. Who? Liv don't even seem like the fighting type to me, though. No, she is. Both of them are. All three of them are. I, I believe. believe. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look, look. Rewatch some of those season one, season three episodes. Liv will throw hands. Layla will throw hands. Season two, sorry. Season two episodes. Season three episodes. Liv will throw hands. Layla will throw hands. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, but this time, Patience threw hands, and it turned out, again, into a very big brawl. Um, <laughs> my favorite, my favorite, because where was living all this? But it was like Layla rushing to get into the middle after Spencer pushed Jordan or something. She was like, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan like, there were so many people throwing each other. I was trying to figure out if Dylan was fighting too or not. Like, I barely paid attention. Oh, yeah. Him. Where was Dylan during all this? Or did Liv take him home? Because remember, she was just like, oh, I'm going to take Dylan home maybe like i don't know that happened so fast i was trying to I was trying back to, to our that. original yeah. point back to our original point this show was the seat this this episode was all over the place so it was so confusing what this timeline was and what like what what at what point in time spencer is recollecting these things and when the sequence in which they happen but anyway Spencer is again feeling bad because he's just like, oh my goodness, I fought with everybody. I fought with Asher. I fought with Jordan, etc., etc., etc. And Layla and Patience are telling him, hey, it's okay. Like Jordan even offered to take you home, like after you push the cake in his face and stuff like that. Uh, which, by the way, too was also hilarious. Uh, <laughs> you want to taste of me? <laughs> you want to taste of me? Here it is. Um. But anyway, we get this scene of them in the alleyway and they have this like drunken fight that I also thought the trailers made it seem like it was going to be more intense than it was. And it was just... Yeah, that part I thought was really normal. funny because Spencer was, it was so really drunk funny, but and acting like a, a fool. It was a regular drunken fight. <laughs> 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 Both of them were acting a fool. Oh, you and uh, you. I'm like, okay, guys. <laughs> let's calm it down let's get a water <laughs> let's get a water let's take a seat 
Um, but I will say the funniest thing to come out of that scene wasn't even because we didn't even get any new information. It was just like, you're just telling, you're just doing what Mac is telling you to do. And him being like, yes, he's our offensive coordinator. Like we got no information, no new information from the scene. And I thought that we would. Uh, but the funny thing that did happen in the scene was Daniel and Spencer doing the little, uh, I <laughs> But yeah, I was I was just expecting more in terms of I don't know just this storyline because it's been building for a while and I thought that this would be the climax, but to yeah. me it wasn't giving climax. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how this spills over again because it looks like it's just going to get even more intense, and we'll talk about that during predictions. Um, but really, that was it. He remembers this the fight with Jordan. He does a little Heisman pose a couple of times. Um, and then he remembers, uh, he comes to Asher to apologize for the Wade situation and Wade is there. And then Wade tells him about his second bar fight that he got into or attempted bar fight rather that he got into when he tried to punch Wade and he falls down. Uh, and then he remembers that. And then all of this to say that at the end of the day, he finally comes to live. Uh, and she is just like, well, yeah, you gotta, you had quite the night, quite the night. And he admits that he was trying to find the day, recollecting the events of the night and trying to find her gift. Uh, and that he lost her gift. And she's like, no, you sure? That's not really a gift that you can lose. And then we see that they they got matching tattoos. And it was really cute and adorable. It was, but my thing, I, do you have tattoos? Because I always thought they still hurt the next day. So how does he not feel that? That was my only question. <laughs> that was my <laughs> only question is I'm like, you didn't at any point, like you didn't take a shower today. <laughs> like, I don't know. It was just weird to be. Right That's what I'm saying. So this man really just did not take a shower today. He was just walking all over the, over the, I was going to say the country, walking all over LA or Inglewood or no, 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 the, the, the bars in Crenshaw. He was walking all over Crenshaw, South Central LA. Uh, trying to recollect these events. Uh, and he went all the way over to GAU also, but never once took a shower. <laughs> <laughs> or felt the tattoo. Which, by the way, what did you think about the drawing of the tattoo? Did you like it? or? Oh, if we were being honest, I thought it was ugly. I'm going to be straight up honest <laughs> with you. Like, <laughs> I was I just like, oh, was. that's and cute. They, and so they did the little thing with their fingers. I couldn't make out what it was. Oh, I knew it was the thing with their fingers, but I said, oh, great gowns, beautiful gowns. That's really cute. <laughs> I really said, but it wasn't even, it wasn't even great gowns because the picture was not pretty, but I was just like, the thought, the idea is really cute. Great idea. Beautiful <laughs> idea. It's cute, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that was the episode. And again, it even left, I don't, was, did anything happen after that? Uh, I don't think so. That's what I'm saying. It just ended on such a... There was nothing, like, cliffhangery or that I can remember that was would launch us into the next episode. Or to your point about payoff, oh. I think that's the one thing. Uh, is that the part, the ending, when we found out that Patience is going viral again? Oh, yes. But that was the last scene? I didn't realize they were the last scene. I thought Spencer and Olivia were the last scene. No, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't. It was all over the place. But yes, we did find out that Patience is going viral um, for the bar fight. And that was it. And that was it. And that, that was the episode. <laughs> but again, I feel like that wasn't strong enough. Like, Yeah, I was yeah, looking for more payoff, to your point in the beginning. Um, but it was a very cute and funny episode. Uh, and then it was just... <laughs> I had this, I had this joke where I said the writers were like here but it was a fun episode <laughs> and now we're getting back to the regular regular PSA <laughs> yes the trauma returns <laughs> the trauma the trauma and drama returns um, so let's talk about that let's pause here thank you for listening audience and we're going to talk about uh, the next episode of All American Beauty. 